What the f is this show? <laughs> Conceptually or the writing? <laughs> Going into this show, I was guaranteed to hate it. Mm -hmm. I think I put this on our list because I thought it would be horrible mm -hmm. and I thought we would sit here and shit on everything right. that it is. But oh my God, I cannot believe I'm saying this, but dear God, I fucking love this show. <laughs> The fall anime season is upon us. So we are jumping into all of the shows that we are watching this season and uh, seeing what's what. This season has a good crop of just like the dumbest shows mm -hmm. that I have seen in a while. And Gintama being my favorite anime, this oh. season speaks to me oh. on so many <laughs> levels. Yes. Evidently there is an anime where someone does get reincarnated into a pig. And unfortunately for Vinny and some of our viewers, we haven't decided to watch that one. Wait, 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 which one is that? But if you're watching it, uh, let us know if the girl falls in love with the pig. That's a thing? I am secretly reading a manga from mm. one of the anime this I season. I think I know which one it is. Vinny has to guess it by the end of the video. Okay, which I'll one? judge by how you're talking about them as we bring them up. All right. But let's jump into our list. We have 17 and like three of them have not aired yet. Mm -hmm. So more on that to come. Uh, getting the first one out of the way, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen uh, season two, core two. We covered this in our summer ranking, so go check that video out. It's just gonna stay at in between A and S for now. Starting off, we have Tokyo Revengers season three. The crybaby hero was back for a third season and a whole new world of hurt. Takamichi Hanagaki, after gaining the ability to transport himself back in time, must try to save his middle school girlfriend, his friends, and his fellow gang members as he navigates the brutal world of Tokyo's delinquent gangs. After several attempts, Takamichi faces off against his toughest foe yet, the Yokohama Tenjuku gang and their leader, Izana Kurikawa. Mysteries come to light as the thought of another jumper makes this the best season yet. Yeah, this season so far completely outdoes the past oh, two seasons phenomenal. we've had. The stakes are getting higher this season. Mm -hmm. Takamichi is literally starting to break, yeah. which I'm like, <laughs> after all you've been through, him compared to his season one right. self, just a completely different character. Oh, absolutely. I was thinking while we were watching this season, you can watch along oh. with us at Let's Watch Some Anime Now. I feel like we've grown with Takamichi yeah. because like we used to kind of like shit on Takamichi watching season one. Season two gave us Goat Michi. Mm. Season three, we're watching like the worst case scenario. I feel so much for him. I feel like my child is growing up. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I really do. A commenter also did inform us that um, Taiju, who makes an appearance this mm -hmm. season, did want to be a shark when he grew up. And so that makes his aquarium restaurant mm -hmm. a whole lot Sweeter? more meaningful. <laughs> Not to ignore all of the horrible things mm -hmm. he did last season. Mm -hmm. I would give anything to see an anime about Taiju becoming number one shark. <laughs> I'm giving this one in between A and S. I'm giving this one a solid A, so but I'm happy between an A and S. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next up, we have Frieren, Beyond Journey's End. We meet the hero party consisting of human hero Himo, dwarven warrior Aizen, human priest Heiter, and elven mage Frieren at the end of their 10 year long journey to defeat the Demon King. After they defeat the Demon King, they restore peace to the land and return to their lives of solitude. We follow Frieren as generations pass and despite taking time for granted, she takes on a new apprentice and promises to fill an old friend's dying wish. Frieren embarks on a new quest to discover the meaning of humanity and her connection to her old party mates beyond journey's end. This show, I think, might be my favorite show of the entire season. Okay. And I'm pretty sure this is the one that you're reading. I've gone on a journey while watching this so far. <laughs> First thoughts after episode one, damn, I feel really sad. Mm -hmm. Very sad watching this. Because you're a human? Yeah. <laughs> it was a little slow and a little, like, mm -hmm too chill and right. I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. But then after like episode three, I was like, damn, I could watch this shit all day. It's just very nice stories. Mm -hmm. A little funny, a little sad, yeah. but simple mm -hmm. in the most refreshing yeah. way. Like very human. Because Frieda is just trying to go and get to know Himo, who's mm -hmm. long dead now, mm -hmm. and she's just trying to collect magic and spells. Right. I think the broader message about time and relationships mm -hmm. does set this apart from a lot of anime that we watch, but I do have to stop myself from thinking about it a little too deeply, or else 
I might have a complete mental <laughs> breakdown if I sit and think about this one a little too much. Your own mortality? Yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying this, but it's right on the cusp of between a mental breakdown mm -hmm. and enjoyment. Yeah, I like right. this better than To Your Eternity. Mm -hmm. I like this one better than Mashoku Tensei, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. You said it was a little slow, and I, I agree, but I really like this oh, pacing where it's yeah. like, I'm just out on a stroll. I've completed all of my main quests. Now I'm doing some side quests and I'm just having like a chill time after I already beat the game. It's like all of the chill parts of Lord of the Rings. Mm, right. I'm giving this one S tier. Oh, I, I'm giving it an A. Okay, yeah. between S and A. All, <laughs> all 17 are gonna be ranked between <laughs> S and A this season. I, I was going through the list and I was like, <laughs> Fall has some heavy hitters, man. Next up, we have The Eminence and Shadow season two. The frenzy has begun. The moon is red. We're out of time. We have very little time remaining. <laughs> Did you come up with that by yourself? Uh -huh, all me. He who lurks in the shadows is back for another season of stumbling through life as the OP leader of Shadow Garden takes on new threats. After being Isekai into a new world, Sid Kagano continues his journey to be the eminence in shadow as he fights against the Blood Queen vampire, juggernauts, and financial crisis. Sid <laughs> is my god. Shadow Garden is my religion. <laughs> I feel like this season is speeding through a lot of the arcs mm -hmm. because it is trying to fit in three really good arcs and do just 12 episodes. I wish it was 24 episodes just because this Blood Queen arc, it's done, mm -hmm. art, and it just was like boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it was really quick. But I'm trying to be grateful that my God has blessed us with his presence again this <laughs> fall. So I'll take what I can get. Mm -hmm. The John Smith arc is coming up next. It'll already be airing by the time this video goes out. And it is my favorite because it is peak cringe. So Molly's read the light novel. Uh, I am grateful for the video that she painstakingly produced to kind of like walk us through a little more hand in hand for this season. Yeah. Uh, so finding like all the small little tidbits that are just added in for the anime itself makes me enjoy right. it even more. Yeah. Uh, God, I mean, this one for me is, it's S tier. It's S tier, oh, S -tier. God tier, S -tier. all the way. I think reading the light novels, watching the anime, and reading the manga are like a complete yeah. package mm -hmm. if you want like the full experience right. of, of it. as much content as you can get. Next up, we have Undead Unluck. What happens when someone who causes death when touched meets someone who can't die? Fuko Izumo has the unlucky ability to cause misfortune to anyone who touches her. After an incident that left both her parents dead, she becomes reclusive until one day she runs into the Undead Man, who she names Andy, who has amazing regenerative abilities and who desires to die the best death possible, disliking his immortal life. As the two are hunted by the mysterious organization Union, the two work together in this wild ride of mayhem and undeath. Oh god, here we go. This one was one of the most shocking this season. Yeah, what the <laughs> hell is this? Like, what the f*** is this? It's so curt and mm -hmm. crude. It's so crude. That I'm just like so shocked while watching this and just how stupid it mm -hmm. is. And Undead's blood leg cannons. It's so gross. It's like something <laughs> that you'd see on like Nickelodeon in the late 90s. Yeah. It's like Ren and Stimpy shit. Or like, what's that weird dog that always, that's just so gross. I don't know, I forgot. Courage? the dog? Yeah, maybe, yeah. How earnest Unluck is, mm -hmm. though, is everything. Right. Because she's, she's genuinely like, I'll, I'll have sex with you right now. And it's not just because I want to save our lives. It's because <laughs> you're the first person who was actually acknowledged. And it's mm -hmm. just, she's so earnest. It, it's very wholesome, oh. <laughs> mixed with undead. Just, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Uh, undead, <laughs> undead saying, guess we got a f at the end of episode one. <laughs> It, it was just, it was beautiful. It was perfect. I don't know how this is uh, shown in, yeah. but okay. If you could negate anything, what would it be? Taxes. What? <laughs> what, what would that, what would that even mean? Save me some dollars, you know? I work hard for that cheddar. I would I, negate I, death. I would negate death. I want to live forever. <laughs> I want to be an immortal person. I want to live forever. That's it. I want to outlive everyone. Even me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to negate life. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, that, this got dark real fast. I did see uh, people online's biggest beef with this is mm -hmm. the objectification of Unluck's body. Right. And obviously, like, I don't like groping, and you shouldn't touch people when mm -hmm. they don't want to be touched. 
the fact that Undead is using Unluck's body, mm -hmm. that's the point, right? Like, right. that's the point of, like, plot development, right. because you know the relationship's gonna grow over time, and right. it already it's has grown a little bit. Not just somebody trying to sleep with somebody else. We'll see if mm -hmm. it gets more gropey, but again, mm -hmm. we've only seen two episodes. Who knows yes. how it's gonna finish? Uh, but the animation on this is so fantastic. Yeah. For as weird and gross as this <laughs> is, it is beautiful. I'm giving this A tier. A, yeah. Next up, we have Spy Times Family Season 2. The Forger family is back as the threat of war and homework looms over the land of Ostania. Lloyd continues Operation Strix while your battles getting shot in the butt, Anya battles school, and Bond battles imminent death. The hunt for Stella stars and peace continues. I think I, I think I missed Spy Family. I think I missed it, yeah. I was thinking about this while we were watching the most recent episode about mm. it feels like it's just going through just dumb, random, nonsensical episodes. And I was like, I don't really want more of that, but I want more of that. Oh, I don't. I, it does feel very like filler to me, but, mm -hmm. but that's the way the manga is. Mm -hmm. I was reading people's comments and people are like, no, it's, more slice of life than spy right spy life you know that's not necessarily my thing i mean i like spy family mm -hmm. i just don't think it's like top of my list it's it's like a very yeah it's slice of life mm -hmm. i'll give it a b uh i'm gonna give this one a b oh i had b too next up we have 100 girlfriends who really 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 love you Renteru has been rejected 100 times by 100 girls. So as he enters high school, he visits a shrine and prays for better luck. The God of Love appears and promises that he'll soon meet 100 people. However, due to the God of Love's messing up, each one of them will be his soulmate, and if any of them are rejected, they will die! Renteru gets more than he bargained for as he starts to meet his 100 girlfriends in what is likely every little boy's dream. Okay, I just need to, we need to pause for a second before we talk about this one. What the fuck? is this show <laughs> okay okay <laughs> okay here's where i'm at like conceptually or the writing <laughs> going into this show i was guaranteed to hate it mm -hmm. i think i put this on our list because i thought it would be horrible mm -hmm. and i thought we would sit here and sh on everything right. that it is but oh my god I cannot believe I'm saying this, but dear God, I fucking love this show. <laughs> I don't like harem things. Right. I don't like high school, mm -hmm. slice of life, mm -hmm. moi, whatever. Yet this has completely broken me. <laughs> and I'm not sure what to do. It is so fucking funny. I can't comprehend what this is. Mm -hmm. Chad Taro is so <laughs> earnest in making those girls the happiest right. girls. It's not like harem as in like, oh, I'm this big guy that right. has a collection of girls. He genuinely wants to make these girls yes. the happiest possible. And genuinely thinks he can too. And I am actually obsessed. Yeah. This has to be the dumbest and most ridiculous of the entire season. Mm -hmm. And I am very much all about it. I don't know what to do with this because this is everything that I hate, but I just, I love it so much. I was thinking this is going to be like rent a girlfriend again, but you're right, he's so earnest. His motives aren't like sexual or pervasive no. or anything. It's just like, I want them to be happy. He's trying to save their lives. He's trying to save their lives. It's the biggest ship post that I have seen yeah. in a while. Mm -hmm. I, I'm giving this S tier. This is S tier rom-com all the way. And for the rest of them, we'll just kind of speed through them because there is a ton on our mm -hmm. list. Mm -hmm. Let us know your thoughts though in the comments of these. Next up, we have Ron Kamanahashi's Forbidden Deductions. Ron Kamanahashi was once regarded as a genius at the top of his detective training academy. However, after solving any case put before him, he inadvertently leads the culprit to commit self-die. His expulsion throws him into a life of solitude and despair until Officer Ishiki knocks on Ron's door seeking the help of a serial murder case. And the two work together, AKA Ron Sherlocking his way through each case and Ishiki keeping the culprits from offing themselves. Mm. Mm. Very fun. Very fun. I've been enjoying it. So that's all I can say about it for now. Uh, this is a mix of Psychopaths, Sherlock, and Ratatouille. Oh, okay, <laughs> sure. I'll give it a B. Give it a B. Next up, we have a girl and her guard dog. 
Izaku just wants to live a normal life, but after her parents are killed, she's put into the custody of her grandfather, who just so happens to be a Yakuza boss. From an early age, she's been raised by Keia, a subordinate of the Yakuza, and when it comes time to attend high school, she decides to attend one far from her hometown in hopes of starting fresh. But her plans take an unexpected turn when Keia enrolls in the same school to protect her in this will they, won't they story. A little weird, but I'm definitely into it. I'm into it, but I don't know if I should be, because <laughs> I think this is like textbook grooming. <laughs> Kea being Isaku's guardian mm -hmm. definitely makes it a little naughty, mm -hmm. like a little forbidden, but damn his voice Those actor. Risks. Every single risks. time Maybe I have to not. mention, <laughs> it's Maybe. Noah's, it's Hoshtawa cool from Bleach, um, just one of the sexiest voice actors out there other than <laughs> Tony <Tomo Kassi. laughs> uh, I'm giving this one a B for kind of uncomfortable. Speaking of love, next up we have I'm in love with the villainous. The Otome anime of the season shakes things up as our main character Ray Taylor is a literal psychopath. After suddenly Izakaiing into our favorite Otome game, Revolution, Ray casts aside the main love interests of the game and sets her sights on the game's antagonist, Claire Francois. This one actually stresses me out. Because the main character is an actual psychopath. Mm -hmm. It was a little funny at first. Right. But now I just feel so much anxiety because Claire has no control over the situation Correct. whatsoever. And she basically has a stalker. Mm -hmm. And Ray don't got nothing going on behind those eyes. <laughs> but actually. She's a crazy person. A crazy person. This would be a horror anime from anybody else's point of view. I think it is a horror anime. Yeah. I just, I'm giving it a D. I'm I, really liking this one. I'm giving it a B. So in between D and B, mm -hmm. C? Next up, we have our dating story, the experienced you and the inexperienced me. Our main character, Ruto, is a typical background character going through typical background character things when one day he confesses to the popular Gyaru Runa Shirakawa. Things take a turn when she agrees to date him. So this season, we have two shows, two other shows that are parodying a show like this. Yes. The Eminence and Shadow, and I've got 100 girlfriends that really, <laughs> really, 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 really love me. Mm -hmm. So that's really funny to me. The show wasn't funny, but the fact that there's other shows parodying it, that's yeah. really funny. But let's be real here. The girl has some very unhealthy views about yes. herself. Mm -hmm and she has very low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. It's very sad, mm -hmm. but it's played off like it's like a cute, like, should I really be thinking about myself and caring about myself? It's like, what? Yeah. I do think that she should spend some time alone instead of having this man main character mm -hmm. come in and save, save her. her. So yeah. that's, yeah. It's super sad, so I'm gonna give this a D. C for sad. Next up, we have Vexations of a Shudden Vampire Princess. Basically, Taiga from Toradora is now a Shudden Vampire Princess and is forced to become a war general in what I can only describe as Edge of Tomorrow meets Beastars. Surprisingly fun, but I do think it's gonna get a little old. Mm -hmm. Did get some good chuckles out of me, though. I was you enjoying, were enjoying this, it a lot. But I don't like how much I've been enjoying it. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna keep watching this, but I don't know for how long. I'm gonna give it a C. I'm gonna give it a C. Next up, we have Deadmount Death Play Core 2. I still have no idea what's going on in the continuation of an enemy I still really like. After being reincarnated into our world, the corpse god continues to navigate through new enemies and possibly some old ones. I really want to like this, but they introduced- I want to understand. <laughs> they introduced even more characters in the first episode of Core 2, and I'm like, hold up. I'm gonna try my mm -hmm. hardest this season. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. People were saying in the last core that this is just world building for an incredible story, but it's like, give me, yeah. just give me, give me something that. to grab onto, hold my hand a little bit. I'm gonna give this a C because I wanna see where this goes. I was gonna give it a B, so I'm between B and C. Right. Next up, we have Dr. Stone, New World Part Two. Senku, Ishigami, and the gang advance stone world technology because the plot demands it. <laughs> The continuation of the once beloved anime is doing just what the MC said they'd do and catapults the world 3,000 years into the future. I love Dr. Stone Season 1. It was one of my favorite anime. It was definitely within my top five for a very long time. Wow. But this <laughs> season, it is just speed running through everything and everything is just convenient for the sake of the plot. And I don't like it. I 
don't like Dr. Stone after season one, but the OP has no right being that beautiful. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm not enjoying it. I'll give it an E. I'm giving it a D for Dr. Oh, in between D and E? Yeah. There are three shows that have not aired yet as of this point that we are gonna be watching. The Apothecary Diaries, mm -hmm. Pluto, Naoki Urasawa's reimagining of Astro Boy, and Scott Pilgrim as well, the anime. And that's it for our first rankings of the fall season. What do you think I'm gonna be reading? I think it's Faden. Really? Is it a hundred girlfriends who really, 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 really love me? Wow. I mean, it is really fun. It's so stupid. I just, I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm so obsessed. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe button, and we will see you next time. Let's watch some anime. I'm Vinny. I'm Molly. And we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.